I'm kind of weird for, for an engineer. You talked a little bit about the, we'll kind of close out the, the college kind of questions here. You talked a little sure. bit about that double major. Um, do you, do you, have you used it? Has it done anything for you in your career or the lessons that you learned while doing it? What, what has it tangibly done for you? So my foot, right, so I am decision science. Like I mentioned, I, this is, well, so I, I was going to say, I'm kind of odd in that yeah. if Miami university had a undergrad, it had a minor in creative writing, I would have also gotten a minor in creative writing. Cause I took a bunch of, uh, like poetry classes and short story classes. Like this is, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of weird for, for an engineer. Um, I think, um, That's awesome. so I would say that the writing that I did helps with writing anything else because you just, I'm very careful with my words when I'm writing it down. Um, from the perspective of, uh, business, I think that it has helped. Um, there are two tangible things that kind of come up that, I, I can point to one decision science is basically business statistics. Um, so I took a bunch of statistics classes. I understand a little bit of sampling. There has been multiple, t and I took a couple of um, higher level statistics classes when I went and got my master's to kind of continue that idea. And there have been many times where I've been like, oh, you know, I we're we're taking this data. This is not my standard data. This is survey data, or this is you know sampling that we're looking at. We need to apply a statistical analysis here. We can use some software that, that does some of it so that I don't have to kind of pull out every textbook I've ever looked at and kind of dig through it. Um, but I know enough to go, hey, this is something that we need to go into. And like once I start reading up, I'm like, okay, yeah. So oftentimes I will be the person <laughs> in the conversation going, okay, that's not really how you use statistics or like, hey, like this is, you know, this is a better way that we can say with some certainty whether or not what we're saying is true statistically it's important speaking. which um, is really important yeah yeah absolutely um and, and, and that's one of the reasons why i went to miami was i really liked the idea of this this business statistics class you know major they no longer offer it by the way they actually stopped offering the major after i started it and now it's only a minor which is really unfortunate um mm. the other thing i mean you, you know i had like you know marketing classes and management classes and i think some of that kind of seeped into like my general knowledge of things but i took this i had to take an engineering capstone class uh, which lasted two semesters but i also had to take a business capstone class because they were in two different colleges at the university and this <clears throat> i keep referencing this capstone class which is really unfortunate because they're, they're at the time i was just like ah oh, this teacher just doesn't know it. yeah like it just is just this is the easiest thing ever. My engineering capstone class is for, is rough, not horrible. It's just really, you know, a lot of time consuming. In this class, I could just kind of skate by. Um, but it was, it was a lot of case studies. And one of the case studies that keeps coming up over and over again <clears throat> is Wendy's. Um, do you know about Wendy's Chili? I don't know about Wendy's Chili. I only know about Kevin's Chili from the office. So please enlighten me on Wendy's Chili. <laughs> I, so, uh, and th like, yeah. So Wendy's has chili, and they okay. have a CEO that this new CEO comes in. He's like, this chili's not making any money. Like, it's maybe making like two or three cents profit per cup of chili. Yeah, okay. you know, it's not a huge profit maker. You know, why do we even have the chili? We're gonna cancel the chili. We don't need to sell chili anymore at Wendy's. And shortly after, they see a huge loss. Because the way that they make Wendy's chilies is that, or at least they were, is that they wanted to make fresh burgers. And the way that they make fresh burgers is they throw them on and wait for you to come in. They don't wait for you to come in and then throw them on. They throw them on, wait for you to come in. And if it's been on there for a certain amount of time, they take the hamburger that's on, been on the grill for a little too long and they throw it into the chili. Wow. So they made profit off of something that they were going to throw away. So now, like even if it's just a couple cents, they're making money off of something they would have lost rather than just losing that money completely. Okay, I see where you're going here. They bring back, so they bring back the chili. So there's and the reason why I bring this up, and this is, is, is something that you know, there's a couple other case studies in this class that were, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is it just keeps coming up. But there's there in business, 
there are oftentimes the chili that you don't realize realize is there. Um, case in point, Nissan has the Titan, which is a large, <clears throat> their largest truck. And they did a study and said, hey, people don't usually buy the Titan as their first truck. They'll buy it as their, if they already own an F-250, then they'll buy a Titan. But a lot of people come in thinking they want a Titan, and then they go, oh, God, that's too big, and they buy a Frontier. So even though they don't sell a bunch of these, they, 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 they make enough money off the ones they do sell, and they, they sell more Frontiers because they're selling the Titan. If they didn't sell the Titan, those people wouldn't come in to look at it, go, that's too big, let me get the smaller version. Okay. Um, the job that I'm currently at, <clears throat> we do a lot of consulting. And, you know, the test department is very small. You know, there's there's only a handful of engineers. You know, we are the largest reseller of, or re retailer of ANSYS um, software. Um, and we have a whole simulation team that like trains people and simulates for everybody, you know, simulates for the customer, runs simulations and whatnot. And the test department is kind of like Wendy's Chili in that a lot of times we might get a phone call going, hey, can you run this test? Because we need to run this test or we can't figure out what's going on. And, you know, and then we go and we run, you know, we, we run some tests. We're like, oh, by the way, we can take this data that we have and we can apply this, you know, simulations. Or it works the other way where simulation says, you know, hey, you know, we might need some extra data. Let's get the test guys in, the testing people feed back into simulation and we get to get more business because of the testing that we do. So even though from a pure numbers sim, uh, situation, um, the test department probably brings in less money than the other departments. The fact that there is a test department yeah. feeds in a lot more than sometimes it's even hard, it's even quantifiable. So this is something that's just kind of from a life perspective, you know, there are times that it's difficult to quantify things, but it's not necessarily means that you can just get rid of it or that it's worth getting rid of. Like, because if you remove it, then you're like, oh, wait, that was actually, that was doing something pretty important. So yes, yeah. the business degree does apply, uh, but more in a larger philosophical perspective, probably. <laughs> No, that, that makes sense, man. I mean, I work for a large EPC contractor and, and we have our maintenance group and our turnarounds group and our engineering consulting arm. And, and none of those arms have the same kind of margins and opportunities for making money as our EPC arm. But if we didn't have those, we wouldn't have those engineering opportunities that turn into mid cap or small turnaround jobs or turn into large EPC projects. I mean, the, the, the little things that, that are your, sometimes even your loss leaders generate the, the, the winners in the other parts of your organization. And it's nice that you're able to use that argument to feel really good about what you do and also maybe justify it to the people that you work up to. And I'm sure that they're smart enough to figure it out themselves. So yeah, that, oh, yeah. that that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I would say that, like, the test department in most companies, a lot of people don't understand what they do. When I was working at Black & Decker, I based, all my customers were internal customers, and I had to go around to all the test teams, all not the, the, the project teams, and be like, hey, tell me about what problems you're having, because I might uh -huh. be able to fix it, because they didn't quite understood, understand what we do. And it's really hard to quantify, like, hey, if I'm doing my job right, then you don't actually know that I'm doing my job. Because that means that you don't have any problems, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, you know, your your warranty problems aren't really coming up. Like you, that that loud noise that I heard, you know, on the on the prototype, didn't make it to market, so nobody's complaining about it. So you know, it's yeah. If you're watching this segment of the Engineering Success Podcast, if you liked it, make sure to check out the other videos down below that are recommended to you. And if you really like the podcast, make sure to subscribe right down there in the middle. Really appreciate it. It's free to you and helps us a lot out. And last but not least, uh, the best way to help the show grow is to comment down below. So leave your comment if you have any thoughts about this segment. Thanks. Chasing payments, still playing in the basin while I'm working on arrangements. They heard the kid in 50 countries. Thank God that's amazing. But I'd rather thank Spotify. They put me on the station.